We've been asking questions. Monday, we started off with how do you see the Bible? Um, and we saw that some people see it literally, some people see it as literature, and some people see it for life application. Uh, Tuesday, we asked you the question, how do you see yourself? <laughs> uh, do you see yourself as God's beloved offspring made in the image and likeness of God, spirit, soul, and body, uh, breath, brain, and body? Uh, we gave you all of those things. Uh, do you see yourself as principle, process, and product? How do you see yourself? Well, today, Today we're asking you a question. Uh, how do you see Jesus? Everybody does not see Jesus the same way. Can I say that again? The, regardless of how you see Jesus, it is important for you to realize that everybody does not see Jesus the same way. They didn't see Jesus the same way during the time when he actually walked the earth, and they don't see Jesus the same way now. Some people from a worldly perspective during Jesus' day, some of them thought he was a blasphemer. They saw him as a blasphemer. Some of them saw him as Be Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Some people saw him as a prophet. Jesus actually Asked his disciples. He said, who do men say that I am? Some say you're uh, Elias, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And Peter said that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. So there's always been some controversy around Jesus and how he is viewed and who he really is. And so I'm asking you the question so that you can answer it for yourself. How do you see Jesus? All right. Um, and from a kingdom perspective, um, there are ways that we look at Jesus from a kingdom perspective. Pulley point number one is that we see Jesus as the uh, pattern son. Pulley point number one, Jesus is the pattern son. From a kingdom perspective, we see Jesus as the pattern son. If you think about a dress or a suit that's being made, you only need one pattern. And from that one pattern, you can make many dresses. You can put enhancements and buttons and zippers certain ways and pockets in different places. But you have one pattern um, that you make the dress from. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Give me some hearts. If you've ever used a pattern, if you've ever cut out a pattern, if you have any idea of what I'm talking about as it relates to pattern. I took home economics. Uh, we made a robe. <laughs> and I remember getting that, I think it was called butter rick or some type of pattern that we cut out the robe from. And they were different colors, different sizes, different enhancements, but it was one pattern that we were using. And so we, from a kingdom perspective, see Jesus as the perfect pattern, as the pattern son. The Bible says that he is the firstborn of many brethren. So Jesus is the perfect pattern. We're pattern our lives after Jesus. All right. So pulley point number one, from a kingdom perspective, we see Jesus as the perfect pattern pattern. We see him as the pattern son, that he is our example of what it means to be fully human and what it means to be fully divine. And so once we have that pattern, it is from that place that we affirm that everything that Jesus Christ was, I am, because he's the pattern. Uh, Savior, Christ, Lord, King, God, everything that Jesus Christ was, I am. Everything that Jesus Christ said about himself, I can say about myself. As long as I'm in the world, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But when I leave, now ye are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Jesus is the pattern son. Everything that Jesus Christ was, I am. Everything that Jesus Christ said about himself, I can say about myself. And everything that Jesus Christ did, I can do an even greater work. In fact, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And so we see Jesus as the perfect pattern. Some people don't see Jesus as a pattern. They feel they could never be who Jesus was. They could never say what he said. They could never do what he did. They don't see him as a pattern. They see him as a lofty, unachievable, unattainable goal that they could never reach. But from a kingdom perspective, we see Jesus as the perfect pattern and we pattern ourselves, our way of being, 
our way of seeing, our way of thinking, our way of speaking, and our way of behaving, we pattern it after Jesus because he is the pattern son. He said to as many as believed on him, to them gave he the power to become the sons and the daughters of God. So I am just as much a son of God as Jesus was. And so he is the pattern son. Pulling point number one, from a kingdom perspective, we see Jesus as the pattern son. Pulling point number two, from a kingdom perspective, we see Jesus as the standard rule of measurement. Pulling point number two, from a kingdom perspective, we see Jesus as the standard rule of measurement, that I'm not comparing myself to anybody else but Jesus. I don't have to measure up to anybody else but Jesus until we all come into the unity of the faith, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ unto a perfect man. And so my standard rule of measurement is not the most popular preacher or the person with the biggest church. Jesus is my standard rule of measurement. So when I'm looking for an example of an apostle, I'm looking at Jesus as an apostle. Example of a prophet, I'm looking at Jesus as a prophet. An example of an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher. I can see all of the fivefold ministry in the person of Jesus. He is my standard rule of measurement because when I compare myself to people, I can always find somebody else that I'm doing better than. When I can Compare myself to people. I can always see somebody that I don't measure up to. So I have one standard rule of measurement, and that is Jesus. Jesus is my standard rule of measurement. Y'all remember those uh, braces they used to have and the sayings they used to put everywhere? What would Jesus do? Because Jesus is the standard rule of measurement. My goal is to manifest that mind of Christ. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So the person that I'm comparing myself to, the person that I'm striving to be like, that I'm striving to measure up to, is Jesus. Jesus is my the standard rule of measurement across Christianity. Jesus is the standard rule of, of measurement. And until we come to that measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, we still got some more growing to do. Until we come to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, we still have some healing to do. Until we come to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, we still have some unfolding to do because Jesus is our standard rule of measurement. He is our primary figure. He is the person that we use to measure ourselves, where we are, our growth, our development, our holistic growth and development is measured by Jesus. And when you use that standard rule of Jesus, it doesn't move. It doesn't change. It is standard. It is universal. Universal. It sticks. All right. So pulling point number one, from a kingdom perspective, how do we see Jesus? We see Jesus as the pattern son, the pattern myself after him, because he is my example of what it means to be fully human and to be fully divine. Pulling point number two, from a kingdom perspective, we see Jesus as the standard rule of measurement. Pulley point number three, we see Jesus as way shower, not way shower, Way sure, all right? And some people are uncomfortable with that term, way sure, because they don't know what it means. Way sure is an all encompassing term that says that Jesus shows us the way, that we are fine. He said, I am the way. So, him being a way sure means that he is showing me how to be my best self. I'm following him. And that's what Christians were originally called. They were called followers of the way. So Jesus is our way shower. All right. He has blazed the trail. He has gone before us. He has set the tone and the stage for us to do the ministry using the mind of Jesus Christ. So he is my way shower. All right. He may not be somebody else's way shower. Somebody else might be following somebody else, but I'm following Jesus. Jesus is my way show. Come and affirm with me that Jesus is my way show. So what does that mean? It's an all encompassing term, way show. All right. Way show means Savior, Christ, Lord of Lords, 
king of kings and God of gods. Let me give you again. Weisho is an all-encompassing term that means five things. He's my savior, Christ, Lord of lords, king of kings, and God of gods. So when I say Weishoah, from a kingdom perspective, it is all-encompassing of all five of those things. Now, some people just see Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And guess what? That is okay, all right? Because Weishoah is encompassing of, of Lord and Christ. You get to see Jesus any way you desire to see him. And I'm not interested in trying to change the way that anybody else sees Jesus. You have to have your own personal experience and your own encounter with Jesus, all right? And so I'm just explaining to you from a kingdom perspective that Jesus is my way shower. And when I say way shower, I mean that he is Savior, Christ, Lord, King, and God. That he is Savior, which means the alarm clock that wakes me up to the truth of who I am as the beloved offspring of God. That he is Christ. He represents the anointing and that I am to be anointed to do what it is that God has called me to do. That he is my Lord and um, I am a Lord, a little L, as a result of his Lordship. That he is my king of kings. And as a result of him showing me the way, I learn how to be a king, a queen, royalty, how to rule and reign in my domain. That Jesus is the God of gods, which means that I learn to be the little G-O-D. Jesus said, ye are gods. That I learn my own divinity by following Jesus' example. You know, I didn't give you the scripture for today. The scripture for today is John 10 and 30. Again, that's the gospel according to John chapter 10 and verse number 30. Jesus said, I and my father are one. And that's what got him to be stoned. That's what got him to be called a blasphemer because he was asserting that he was one with God. And that's what's probably going to get some people to call me a heretic because I'm saying what Jesus said. I and my father are one. There's no separation between me and God. There's no separation between me and my good. I and my father are are one. And so from a kingdom perspective, and that's what we talk about this principle that we're talking about, the kingdom principle of divine nature. It is my nature to be divine because Jesus is the God of gods and he's teaching me how to live out this divine life. So this, we're elaborating this week on the principle of divine nature. So it is important to understand divine nature. You can, it's based upon how you see the Bible. It's based upon how you see yourself. And it's based upon how you see Jesus that helps you to tap into your own divinity. Anybody tapping into your own divinity? Anybody following Jesus' example? So from a kingdom perspective, let me review. We see Jesus, pulling point number one, as the pattern son. For us to be just like him, all right? Pulley point number two, from a kingdom perspective, we see Jesus as the standard rule of measurement. If we don't measure up to him, we've missed the mark. We still got some more uh, unfoldment to happen, all right? And pulley point number three, we see Jesus as our way shower, which means Savior, Christ, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, and God of Gods. How do you see Jesus? All right, that Jesus evolved in consciousness. Thank you, Bootsy. That Jesus evolved in consciousness from being Jesus to Jesus Christ to Christ Jesus. That's what that Christ part of the way show it means. It means an evolution in consciousness. That he went from Jesus to Jesus Christ to Christ Jesus. And I am unfolding and evolving to be the best Christ that I can in every situation that I'm in, to be the best Christ that I can be, that the Christ is in me, the Christ is flowing through me, and the Christ is functioning as me, that when you see me, you see the Father that I decrease so that the Christ in me might increase. And so I'm asking you today, how do you see Jesus? Do you see Jesus from a myopic perspective? Or are you able to expand your consciousness? And as you expand your consciousness of how you see Jesus, you expand your consciousness to be able to be more like Jesus. Can I say that again? As you expand your consciousness of how you see Jesus, 
you expand your consciousness to be able to be more like Jesus. Amen. I love you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of the daily download. If you've been blessed by today's uh, session of the daily download, sow a seed, meet a need, boost this post. If you've been fed, if you've been edified and built up, sow into what it is that you have received today. All right. And don't keep this to yourself. Somebody else needs to have an expanded view of Jesus. So share this on your page. Tag somebody in this post so that we can reach our goal of 500 views. Somebody needs to good know the good news of the gospel of the kingdom. We got to get it all over this earth. Amen. I love you so much. God bless you. At seven o'clock, I'll be on my personal page taking your prayer request with Shepherd Mother. I am so excited to be able to go to the throne of grace today. I love you so much. God bless you. Until next time, remember there's only one life and that life is God's life. And God is living God's life through me and God is living God's life through you. Yes.